Public Access Television is not responsible for program content. This program is produced by Anchored in Faith Gospel Church of Oxford, Iowa. Reverend Linda Hahn, Senior Pastor. The latest release of our full-length cable TV telecasts are now prominently posted each week, beginning Sunday evenings on YouTube. YouTube YouTube.com slash Anchored in Faith. Search for Anchored in Faith, all one word, in the search box for Smart TVs and Roku TV viewing. From Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa, this is Anchored in Faith. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now God above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory, revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for Thy Spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Living for Jesus, a life that is true. I give henceforth to live. 
morning. It was quite a struggle getting here this morning. But <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you for, for bringing us all here today and, and bringing us together for this fellowship and, and for, for your word. And I thank you for allowing me to be a vessel of your word. I just ask that, that you help me to get my flesh out of the way and allow you to flow through uninhibited in Jesus name amen well it's been said a lot lately by by many Christians um, and including Pastor Linda and, and Elder Doug that uh, that our country's under judgment right now and you know that that us as a country we, we've turned from God we've turned away from our from our Christian heritage and as I look out, you know, it's really hard to argue with that. Um, I saw a stat a uh, week before last. It said that there are less than 50% of the adults in America that are members of a church for the first time in over 100 years. You know, if you look at things like um, addictions is running completely rampant. You know, there's 18 million people in the United States that are that are um, addicted to alcohol. Over 40 million that are addicted to nicotine and tobacco. Um, there are 4.2 million uh, that use marijuana. There are 1.8 million people addicted to painkillers. Uh, over oh, over 820,000 people addicted to cocaine. Almost 430,000 people that are hooked on heroin. Yeah, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And if you look at um, sexual addiction, there's between 12 and... Uh, it says the number of people in the United States with sex addictions is currently estimated at between 12 and 30 million people. And of those people, 72% of them were physically abused as children. 81% were sexually abused as children, and 97% were emotionally abused as children. Um, then you got the, the abortion rate is, is completely out of control. In 2018, over 620,000 uh, babies were aborted. So, you know, regardless of your, of your political views, um, you, you have to agree that this country is in despair. And... And as you look around, it looks like it looks as if the, the Almighty has taken his hand of protection off of us. Talking to some people that, that live in the world, they'll tell you that, you know, this is just the new progressive world. It's the way it is now. It's, it's, the, it's the world of free thinking and, and you know, whatever, whatever have you. But this Bible tells me that there's nothing new under the sun. And 
um, I'm going to go back to and review some of the stuff that, that I read two weeks ago. And I think you'll see that, that what's in here lines right up with what's happening now. Um, it was turn to Judges uh, chapter 2, verses, verse 13. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them unto the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. It sounds pretty harsh to, to think that, you know, that God would allow enemies to come against his people, but, you know, if we look at uh, the next chapter, um, Judges chapter 3 and verse 4, uh, that says, And they were to prove Israel by them, to know whether or not they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Uh, so if we, let's go back to Exodus, um, Exodus chapter 23, starting with verse uh, 20. Behold, I send, unto, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is, it, my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take thy sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall, nothing cast their, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee. I will destroy all the people whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, the Hittite from before thee. I will not drive them from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little by little I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert into the river. I will deliver the inhabitants of the land unto your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. So, God set up certain commandments and rules for his people to follow. And, and he told them that there will be consequences if you don't follow it. You know, this is this is the way that 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 I expect you to live, and if you, and if you live this way, you'll be blessed, and I'll, and I'll take care of you. But you know, back in Judges, you see that that they they didn't do that. They started serving other gods, and they they allowed the all the the Ittites into their land, and and uh, made covenants with them that they were directly told not to in the, by the law of Moses. And you know, a lot of this, or th that whole passage is something that I read two weeks ago, and I know it's re you know repetitive for some people. But as I said then, it's the word of God is like an onion, and you peel off different layers. And you know, the meaning that we got out of it then is a little bit different than than uh, what we'll see today. So um, then I I discussed the what some people call the sin cycle, or I, I see it more as like a, a backing forth between God and his people. Um, you know, God sets up his rules, 
or his covenants for people to live by. And eventually, we become rebellious, do our own thing, go against God, which brings on his retribution. He removes his hand from us. And under that retribution, we become sorry and repent. <laughs> and, and then which brings on eventually his restoration. Um, you know, the, the physical enemies that, that the Israelites battled uh, back in those days are the same enemies that we battle today, but only they're a spiritual enemy. Um, we battle them as, you know, in those statistics that I read off earlier, and alcoholism and drug addiction and um, lots of other different kinds of sins. You know, so if it's true that that we are in a time of judgment and you know we're in that in that retribution stage that I that I read about you know there 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 is good news you know we we can um come out of that stage of judgment you know um judges uh 3 9 says and when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel or uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14. Um, if, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Our Father Yahweh, he, he is a kind and loving God, but he, he has expectations of us. He set rules and guidelines for us to follow. And, and when we step up outside of those, it, it angers him, and there's consequences for that. But, you know, we as a church can repent and can move back into that. Well, we as a country can repent, but it starts with us as a church. If, if, the, if the church will come together and, and cry out and fall upon our knees and plead for the people of our country, it, it'll begin a move of God on the country. And... And it will take us from that retribution stage into repentance, you know, where our Father will hear our cries, and he'll begin to bring us into restoration. Well, when we go into that restoration stage, we need to do our part there as well. Um, we need to return to his ways, you know, to the rules and the, com and the commandments that he has set for us. Matthew chapter 22, uh, 36 Wrong one. The, the disciples are speaking with Jesus here, and they said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is likened unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments... Hang, hang all the law and the prophets. So if we can manage to do these two things, we, we can be in the will of God. You know, um, all of the Ten Commandments are, can be fulfilled. All, all of his commandments can be fulfilled by, by both loving God and loving your neighbor. You know, so how we love God is we spend time with him. We build our relationship with him. We spend time in worship, um, singing, singing songs to him, praising and worshiping him. We send, spend time in prayer. Um, you know, having your own personal prayer closet is a, is a very key piece to having a personal relationship with God. And we love him by, by being in, the, in his word, by, by, by studying him and getting to, getting to know him. This, reading this word will allow him to transform you into someone that's more like him. And then you know, with the second commandment, love your neighbor as you love yourself. I look at, uh, at, at the Great Commission, or what we call the Great Commission from Jesus for that. 
uh, at the end of Matthew. Jesus says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So we take that, that love that we have for the Father and that we receive from the Father, and we go forth and give it to everyone else around us. Uh, kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit, but, um, you know, when, as a teenager, I... Uh, I, I was pretty rebellious, you know. I I had gotten to the point where my mom couldn't handle me anymore. Uh, she lived in Denver, and my dad lived here, and my mom didn't know what to do with me. She couldn't handle me. She sent me here to live with my dad, <laughs> and it wasn't long before me and my dad couldn't couldn't figure it out. We, um, you know, he tried, and and I just wouldn't listen. I wouldn't follow the rules that he set, and he eventually. He, had to just let me go and do what I was so insistent on doing <laughs> and, and destroying myself, which is exactly what, what that is what I was doing. And I, I wound up in and out of jail a few different times, and, you know, I did nothing. I, I, I was through jobs. If I had a job, I, I didn't have them for very long. You know, I lived in my car quite a bit. I, I moved from person's couch to couch. <laughs> um, but as I look back now, had my dad not taken his hand off and let me get to the point where I needed that repentance, I wouldn't have ever found myself parking in the back parking lot of this church and coming into the church and so many lives would be different today. You know, so for the moment, you know, while you're going through the discipline or, or the, uh, the, the, the retribution, as I called it in the, in the steps earlier, it, it feels, it's painful and unpleasant and, and nobody wants to do it. But it's necessary to bring us back to where we need to be. Um, if we turn to Hebrews twelve eleven, well, that was Hebrews twelve eleven. The English Standard Version <laughs> it says, "For the moment, discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it." So he uses. The, the mistakes we make and the wrong turns we make to later teach us how to later be closer to him and to help someone else that's, been, that's in that situation that you've already been through. You know, so in closing, I just I, I feel like as, as a church, as a Christian body, we, as a body of Christ, if we could all start to, to just push to pray more for our country, to cry out for our country, to, to, to seek that, that move of God and to brighten our light of Christ so that we can affect those around us, we can and will make the change that this country needs. Mm, Father, I just ask that, that you touch the the hearts and minds of all those that, that, that hear this word today and and I just ask that there that 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 your voice is able to come through through my my stuttering and my bumbling, you know, and you use my voice get through my stumbling as you did through through uh, Moses' stumbling and stuttering. <laughs> you can you can do it for him, you can do it for anybody. Just thank you, Jesus. If you're a Christian, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and that you expect to go into the kingdom, what kind of essence are you admitting? 
Are you a half-hearted Christian and you go to church once in a while and go here and there once in a while, go to a special meeting or something, but just don't seem to want to get hooked up with the church and serve God? The church is the body of Christ, and you should be in one of those bodies that you might do the effective work of God. If that's you, you should either come to Anchored in Faith Gospel Church or get to a similar-minded church that can give you a community of love to be in and that you might serve Christ and be truly the essence of Christ. If you are not part of the body of Christ, you need to take on the essence of Christ. Lay aside your old self and put him on new. And let your life be changed. Then get hooked up with the church. Let's pray. Lord God, for those who are half-hearted, we ask you that they will turn their hearts fully to you, Lord, and become an instrument for God, work inside a church. For those that aren't saved, Lord, we pray that they accept Christ. If you haven't accepted Christ, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive my sin. Enter into my life. May I take on your attributes and your ways and cast mine away. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it, then you've started a walk with Christ. You need to continue that walk and get into church and be surrounded by like-minded believers. We love you at Anchored in Faith. In addition to our postal address, Anchored in Faith Gospel Church has several electronic means to connect with you. Find our TV episodes at youtube.com slash anchored in faith. Visit our website at anchoredinfaith.org. Our phone number, which is area code 319-828-4815. Our email is tv at anchoredinfaith.org. And find us on Facebook by typing at AIFGC into the Facebook search box. We are actually a small church. If you call our 828-4815 phone number, leave a short message and make sure to include your phone number so we can call you back since we do not have caller ID. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa. Stay tuned for Anchored in Faith sermons from yesteryear, delivered by founding pastor Rev. John Hahn and other evangelists. Anchored in Faith Classic is next on this station. Public access television is not responsible for program content. This program is produced by Anchored in Faith Gospel Church of Oxford, Iowa. Rev. Linda Hahn, Senior Pastor. The latest release of our full-length cable TV telecasts are now prominently posted each week, beginning Sunday evenings on YouTube, youtube.com slash anchored in faith. Search for anchored in faith, all one word, in the search box for smart TVs and Roku TV viewing. about being saved. I'm saved. Amen. Saved from what? I'm saved though. Saved. What does it mean to be saved? I'm saved though because I answered all the call and Brother Hahn and Brother uh, Buzzwell laid hands on me. I'm saved. I know I'm saved. What are you saved from? Well, the devil, I guess. So we're going to talk about being saved. There's more to being saved.
than just saying you're saved. There's a lot more to it than just thinking, well, I, I answered the altar call, I accepted Jesus, I'm saved. If you're saved, something's going to change. Amen? So I'm going to read a few scriptures. We're going to preach just a little bit, and we're going to talk about being saved. First off, you run into a lot of people who say you approach them with a salvation message, and you talk about God to them, and they'll say, I'm just can't change. Can't be done. I tried that once. I went to church for a whole week. I even prayed to God once, and it didn't do me any good. I'm just the way I am, and that's the way I am. Amen? Huh? And it says in Jeremiah 13, 23, Can the Ethiopian change his skin, or the leopard his spots, that they be also do good that are accustomed to doing evil? All these stories get these colloquialisms, you know. A lot of them are just deeply seated right there in the Bible, aren't they? The old thing, can a leopard change his spots? Can a white, it says, can an Ethiopian change his skin? Or, or can a Caucasian change his skin? Can, yeah, can an apple turn into a pear, huh? That's what people say. That's where, they, that's where their mindset is. It's I've been like this, I've always been like this, and I, I just, you know, it's just so hard. For me to change. Amen. Amen. Paul was walking down a road. Remember? And, and the Lord and the angel of God come to him and it blinded him. Remember that? Amen. And he, he's going down a road. Turn around, Rick. And, 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 he, and he said, Paul. He, Paul. Now, you guys have read this and heard it preached. But until you see this on TV, you will not understand what kicking against the goads is. The goads is a sharp stick. The goads is a sharp stick, which they use to hurt an animal, you see. And God is able to change the color to your skin. And he is able to change the spots on you because he's going to goad you. <laughs> now kick, come on, kick, kick. You got to kick against it. Yeah, you got to go. Uh, and, and, and turn around here. We got to do this. <laughs> In fact, you'll do better if you get down on your hands and knees. Get down on your hands and knees like a beast. Look at now you can kick against the go. Kick at it. Now, that's it. That's it. Kick it. And, that, and this, is what the, this is what the reference to Paul. God is trying to influence him. <laughs> You'll never forget kicking against the goads, will you? But John 3... 3 through 6 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, anew he cannot see the kingdom of God. Change must come into your life. You must be born of blood and of water. You must let the Spirit of God change and influence your life. If you're saved, they're going to know you're saved. If you're saved, something is going to change. Salvation is not just coming to church on Sunday morning. Salvation is not a one-time experience. Salvation is a lifetime walk with the Lord that will change you. Amen. There will be evidence of your salvation. If you're saved, there should be a change. You should be like Brother Rick Reichardt where they call you preacher man and they don't even want to talk to you. That they get so sick of you saying it because they do not want to be regenerated. They don't want their skin color to change or the spots to come off. They want to stay the way they are because they continue to what? Kick. They keep kicking. That's what they want to do. They don't want to. They don't like it. They want to kick against it. Amen. If you're really saved, you quit kicking. God works like this. The first time he tries to move you, he just speaks to you. 
He'll just speak unto you and say, you need to change. Your spots need to move around a little. Your skin color needs to change and be different than what it was. Your evil doing should not be evil anymore. You should start turning around and repent and do good. He just walks up to you. And he comes up and he speaks in a still small voice. He says, Matthew, Matthew, don't do that. Kick, Matthew. That's what you do, right? You kick. So what choice does God have but to go and run out into the yard and get, just like Granny used to tell, get the stick and start poking so, because you've been kicking, amen? This would all go better for you if you ever helped me move pigs over at Kinsinger's. We'd take these big sharp sticks and, and they kick. Amen? And squeal. Oh boy, they squeal. Yeah, I think that should be added. Kick and squeal. I'm telling you what they like. Well, I don't know why God's picking on me. Wee! You see, I've learned through hard experience. I mean, I am a goad kicker from way back. I mean, for 20 years, God told me I was supposed to be a preacher, and I kept telling God, send somebody else, don't send me. Like the old song I used to hear at, at Bible camp, please don't send me to Africa. Now, you keep pushing. God keeps pressing. He's trying to do something with you. You know the reason a lot of people aren't here this morning? They're kicking. They're kicking against a stick. God's been pushing them. Yeah! Jesus loves everybody. I'm going to love them with a stick till they start getting lovable. Amen? He says that love, his love is rebuke. And if you just say, well, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, that's all right. God understands your sin. Yeah, and he wants you to get rid of it. He wants you changed. Why? Well, you're good. Because when you become, well, you don't kick at the stick so much, your life ease up. You don't have to be poked with the stick if you listen the first time, right, Matthew? <laughs> Amen. You must be born again. Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. And you hath he quickened. Did he quicken who were dead? You were dead through your trespasses and sins. Even when you were dead in sin through your trespasses, hath quickened us together with Christ. We were actually dead. Walking dead men. And we got born again. You know, when you were walking dead, you don't feel, th th this might give you, some of you, an assurance of your salvation this morning. When you were walking dead, you don't feel the ghost. You don't have any feeling. You're dead. God isn't dealing with you. You haven't made a confession to him. You haven't turned your life toward him so the sharp sticks don't poke against you. You can walk right along in your sin and feel just fine about it. Amen? Yeah. I mean, you're just doing what you're born to do. A sinner is supposed to sin. But we don't need to stand here in a church and judge the world. Those guys, unless they have made a profession for Jesus Christ, those guys sitting down at the alibi and at the beef house and at the, and, at, at the legion last night making absolute fools of themselves for the devil on the devil's day are doing just exactly what they're supposed to do. 
They belong to him. He's their Lord. And he, they're following him and doing a good job of it. But if they've made a profession for Christ, when they're doing it, there's a poke. Then it starts to hurt, right, Bobby? He knows what I'm talking about. Because, you see, nobody really wants to go to hell. They might say they want to go to hell, but they don't want to go to hell. So, but here's what they want. You're out there on the TV camera who this stick is poking in the side right now. This is what you really want. You want God, no stick, and no commitment. You want to go to heaven, but you don't want your life to change. You want to have all the benefits of God, but none of the requirements of God. You want everything that God's got and everything that the devil's got, and you want it all at once. Amen? Amen. Unfortunately, it just don't work that way. Jeremiah says, in Jeremiah he says, me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. When Elijah got done on a mountain, he says, serve ye God or serve ye Baal? Which way are you going to go? Which way are you going to go? That's out there on the TV. Which way are you going to go? You going to serve God? You going to serve Baal? If you're going to serve God, he's going to get out the stick. If you will listen to him, he don't have to use it. If you listen to him, you don't have to use it. If Linda had been the good little girl that she looks like she is, when she's a little girl, Granny wouldn't have had to send her out to the willow tree to get the switch. They just send her to get her own switch. <laughs> You can't <laughs> If you're saved, you're going to be quickened. You're going to become alive. You're going to be different. You're not going to be the same dead man that you were. When you come to life, those around you will see you raising up in life, and it will make a difference. If they don't see that you're changing. And if it don't bother the people you're around, you better re-examine your salvation. If you are not a light in their presence and a pain in their donkey, I'm not saying you got to say things, just looking at you. Just knowing what you are doing for God convicts them. If not, Better go back to the well. Better start checking out and see what you are. Amen? Amen? If you are able to get along with all the sinners and you're able to hear their jokes and you're able to see their stunts and if you're able to be surrounded by the things that they do and it doesn't bother you, there's something wrong. Right. You were dead in your sins through your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh hath quickened together with him. Colossians 2.13. You were dead, but you came alive. Your heart's been circumcised. No longer does he take a piece off of your body, but he takes a piece out of your heart. He takes that evil piece of flesh that wants to drag you down. He takes that sin nature and he starts to work on it. That's what salvation is. It is a continual walk with Jesus Christ and allowing him to take the filth out of your life and make a saint of God out of you. You can do it the comfort way or you can do it the sticky way. <laughs> Amen? You've got a choice. You can just lay it down and say, oh, God, take this sin from me, or he can come at you and pry it out. How many ever went out, and this comes through to some people real well, especially if you're my age, involved in this sort of thing. How many ever went out and picked up hickory nuts? Okay. Any kind of nuts. You ever mess with nuts? Okay. And, and, and you take them nuts, and the first thing you got to do is you got to crack them. Amen? That's the day you get saved. God cracks the nut, and he looks inside. And there's some things in there 
that need to come out. You ever sit there all day with that nut pick and try and get that hickory nut or that walnut out of there, you know? You can either be like a pecan, where you just let the shell fall off and the meat falls right out on the plate, nothing to it, or you can be like one of them black walnuts, where you got to... To get it out, amen? amen. I won't be a pecan. <laughs> you know, you just crack the shell and it just falls right out. Nothing to it, amen. I see verily, verily. This is uh, John three, five through six. Verily I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that's which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You've got to be born again. For something to be born a second time, it has to die. Has to be dead to get alive. Amen? you got to get dead so that you can get alive. You've got to die to your trespasses and your sins and let the rejuvenating life of Jesus Christ bring you to life that you might come bursting out of the ground like a plant in the garden in the spring and spread out your wings, your little leaves in front of God and let him start building you and nurturing you and bringing you up the way that you should go that you might be become a mighty tree and a mighty witness for Christ. Amen. I got to tell the people on TV something. Being saved ain't all that easy. If you want an easy life, if you want to have it your way, you don't want to have any authority over you, you don't want to be pushed around by a mighty God, don't get saved. You can have your pleasure for a season. You can have your sin. You can have all of it you want. The only real drawback to it is an eternity in hell. And after about so long a season of sin, you'll think you're in hell while you're still here. If you get on the right stuff and into the right stuff, you'll swear you're in hell and you haven't left this earth. And that it's not even a morsel of what's to come when you get there and the bad thing about hell is you don't even get to stay there as bad as it is you end up going to the lake of fire which is prepared for his devils and his angels that have sinned against God But if you want easy life, go ahead. Go ahead and live it. Scripture says that once you've went into hell, God's completely forgotten you. You reject God and head to hell, it's over. God doesn't sit around and mourn about the ones that go to hell. He just plain forgets them. Spend an eternity without God. <sighs> Hallelujah. Not by works of righteousness, which he have done, but by according to the mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. He cleans us up, we just become willing vessels by the Holy Ghost and washing and regeneration. Our baptism represents our step in Christ. The filling of the Holy Ghost comes into us, amen? To enable us. Because unfortunately, we're just not able to get good on our own. All we can do is get obedient 
All we can do is get willing. See, he empowers us through the Holy Ghost to do whatever we need to do in our life, but we just have to quit kicking and let it happen. Amen? John 3.14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brother. And he that loves not his brother abide in death. Our brother. Did it say we love the world? We want to see the world saved, but we love one another. We love one another. If you see not love, if they claim to be brethren, and yet shun those that are brethren, they claim to be brethren, but your suit's not new enough and your carpet ain't good enough for them. You have a little suspect to what kind of brothers there are, amen? Hallelujah. But the fruit of the Spirit, this is what's going to come out. When that plant that was planted in the ground that come forth into life and, and perked out of that garden, the fruit that's going to come out of that thing is going to show what it is. If a cucklebird comes up, I'll guarantee you what you're going to get. You're going to get cucklebirds. Amen? Which aren't much good for anything. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Against such thing, there is no law. That's what we're supposed to be. If you're saved, that's what's supposed to come up. We should get up every morning. And look on our limbs and see what kind of fruit is hanging on us and how close it is to becoming ripe and usable. Amen? And everybody say, ouch. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, once you inspected your fruit Philippians 1 6 being confident in this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you hath performed it perfected it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ return how many understand salvation better than they did when we started this morning It's not a little walk up an aisle. It's not the laying on of the hands. It's not the water of baptism that saved you. It's the grace of the living God that brings you unto salvation. But when he does, he starts to work in your life. He starts to mold you and make you like the the pot in the potter's wheel he comes along and he wants to change something so that you become more what he wants you to be he's preparing your character because you're going to go into heaven you're going to rule and reign with him on this earth during the millennium I've had so many people ask me how a loving God, that somebody asked me this at youth group the other day, how a loving God could possibly send anybody to hell. I'll answer that. How could a loving God ever let rebellion enter heaven? Because then there'd be no heaven.
If on the streets of gold in the, in, in the New Jerusalem, everybody was kicking against a sharp stick, just what kind of heaven would it be? Wouldn't be heaven at all. It would turn it straight into hell. Amen? So God can't let anybody in that won't submit and turn over to him. And Jesus has to become pliable. Amen? Anybody in here this morning come to realization they weren't saved, they need to be really saved. If it's you, raise your hand. I'm not going to bow heads. I want it in the open. Anybody decide that they're going to quit kicking against the goats? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. How about... You want to start one of the most difficult, probably the most difficult thing that you could ever do? Truly get saved. Quit kicking against the goats. Come to a confession of Christ. I'd be lying to you if I was telling you it was easy. But it's the most important thing. Sin for a season or a lifetime of eternity separated from God. Why don't everybody rise up with me and, and, and pray a prayer, a prayer of confirmation for those that are praying on the TV? Lord Jesus, forgive my sin. I'm coming into submission. Your will. I want to be truly saved. Lord, go ahead and change me. I'm not going to fight. I'll follow. Amen and amen. In addition to our postal address, Anchored in Faith Gospel Church has several electronic means to connect with you. Find our TV episodes at youtube.com slash anchored in faith. Visit our website at anchoredinfaith.org. Our phone number, which is area code 319-828-4815. Our email is tv at anchoredinfaith.org. And find us on Facebook by typing at AIFGC into the Facebook search box. We are actually a small church, if you call our 828-4815 phone number, leave a short message and make sure to include your phone number so we can call you back since we do not have caller ID. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, P.O. Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322, or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa. The latest release of our full-length cable TV telecasts are now prominently posted each week, beginning Sunday evenings on YouTube youtube.com slash anchored in faith. Search for anchored in faith, all one word, in the search box for smart TVs and Roku TV viewing.